This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've got a lot of racing action to bring to you from around the country, of course, highlighted by action with three year olds on the racetrack this past weekend the Arkansas Derby at Oak Lawn, the Bluegrass in Keenla at Keeneland in Kentucky, and of course, here in New York, the Wood Memorial last Saturday at Aqueduct. The Racing Festival of the South concluded on Saturday with the running of the Arkansas Derby. We are going to begin our program down at Oak Lawn Park with the fifth season Breeders' Cup Handicap. This is a mile and a 16th event. Three-year-olds and up running for $100,000. Let's head down to Oak Lawn to begin the program with the fifth season Breeders' Cup Handicap. And they're off in the fifth season Breeders' Cup. Calvin Burrell wastes no time with Relic Reward. He shoots him out there to battle for the lead. There goes Steel Silver Black and to the middle, Mr. Ross. Length and half back to Crimson Classic and True Luck. Another three lengths back, Tollbooth Willie, and at the back of the pack is Avigator as they head on to the turn. Mr. Ross to the outside, Relic Reward at the rail between them, still Silver Black. Length further back, it's Crimson Classic, two and a half to True Luck. The defending champions got six lengths to make up. Another three to Tollbooth Willie, Avigator trails the opening quarter mile, 23 and two. Mr. Ross leads the way by a half length. Calvin Burrell has Relic Reward tucked in at the rail in second. Crimson Classic, the favorite, is a length back in third. Still Silver Black is next. Trying to move up on the outside, True Luck along the rail. Tobooth Willie, Avigator also trying to move on this field after a half in 47 seconds. Mr. Ross and Relic Reward continue to make the pace here. Crimson Classic stalking the leaders there in third. Three lengths back, True Luck is next alongside of Steel Silver Black. Avigator has begun his move alongside of Tobooth Willie as they head on to the final turn. Mr. Ross, not giving way, continues to lead Relic Reward by a half. Crimson Classic is still two lengths back in third. Avigator to the outside, moves into fourth. Three quarters, 111 and one. And here they come into the stretch of the fifth season Breeders' Cup. Mr. Ross continues to lead the way, Relic Reward second. Crimson Classic is third, Avigator fourth. It's Mr. Ross showing away. Relic Reward is still there second. Crimson Classic third, but Mr. Ross continues to be strong. A furlong to go, and Mr. Ross has eased away from this field. He opens the lead up to three and a half. With a 16th to go, the fifth season Breeders' Cup no longer in doubt. It's Mr. Ross who will win it by two and a half. Relic Reward running second. Crimson Classic was third. little bit of a move into the third spot at the end, but Mr. Ross was all alone at the finish line under rider E.C. Perner. The winner here, Mr. Ross, a five-year-old chestnut gelding bred in Oklahoma, son of Sluicide out of the Dust Commander Mare, Dusty Donna. He is owned by Don C. McNeil, trained by Donnie Von Hemmel, ridden to victory, as I mentioned, by E.C. Perner, getting the win at a mile and a sixteenth distance here in one minute, 42 and four-fifths seconds. Racing continued with the Racing Festival of the South down in Oak Lawn Park with the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. This is a grade three event, a uh, six furlong event on the main track with a purse of $125,000 guaranteed. Let's head back to Oak Lawn for the call of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Run Johnny was a step slow at the start. Show Me the Stage rushes out there to grab the lead. A Bajo to the outside. Vinny's Boy also showing speed today. And then it's Gray the rest of the way. Smolder and Hart. Run Johnny and Chindy at the back of the pack. They rush down the back stretch with Show Me the Stage. The Philly and David Flores leading at a half. A Bajo outside of her second. Vinny's Boy is right there third. The opening quarter, 21 and three. It is Show Me the Stage. Leading at a half, Abajo second, Vinny's boy third. Smolder and Hart has now moved up to fourth. Run Johnny's at the rail fifth and about ten lengths back to Chindy. Midway on the turn and still show me the stage leads at Abajo is second. Smolder and Hart trying to move up outside of Vinny's boy. And here they come into the stretch of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. The half in 44 and four. 
And now Abajo and Vinny's boy are battling it out for the lead. Show me the stage also between horses. It's show me the stage leading it. Abajo is second, Spolder and Hart third run, Johnny dying for room. And here comes Chindy, his late run. They drive for the wire. The leader is show me the stage, Spolder and Hart, Chindy to the outside, but it's the Philly. Show me the stage scoring the upset win in the count. taking the lead, dominating every step of the way, and holding on to a half a length advantage over Smolder and Hart with Cal Burrell. Once again in the runner-up spot, Vinny's boy uh, ran uh, third most of the way around, a little bit of a one-paced effort. Heavy favorite in here, Run Johnny, really just never got to get his feet going. He didn't get off as quickly as he often does. Uh, had a little bit of traffic trouble, just couldn't really seem to get himself rolling. Chindy, the uh, little gray ghost that we see flying through the through the stretch in uh, a lot of the sprint races down in the uh, in the Arkansas area, just uh, never seemed to get himself in gear uh, under Tim Ducey. wasn't quite able to uh, to get his feet rattling as he likes to hear them rattle through the stretch. The winner, show me this stage, a dark bay or brown four-year-old filly bred in California by Jen's List. This is a daughter of Slu, the surgeon out of Showtime Lady, a defense verdict mare. This one is owned by Eric Guillaume at all, trained by Eric Yeo, ridden to victory, as I mentioned, by David Flores. She completes the six furlongs in 109 and 3 fifths seconds. Racing continued in the, uh, uh, the Racing Festival of the South with the Fantasy Stakes, a grade two event for three-year-old fillies. This race has been known to draw some very strong fields. It didn't quite draw as hot a field as it could have uh, with the defection of a couple of horses out of this field, but a very good race nonetheless with uh, a couple of fillies in here who have a lot of potential to develop, including Spain, a filly who spent a good portion of last year chasing Chaluki, shipping in from the West Coast for the Fantasy. Let's head back to Oaklawn Park now for Friday's running of the Fantasy Stakes. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Fantasy. Bit of a sluggish start for Classy Cara. Meanwhile, there goes Carlos Gonzalez with Miss Pixie rushing out there for the lead. Gold from Miguel wants to challenge. Eden Lodge is next. Miss Seffens is right in the hunt among them. Broadway Express is next, and Tim Ducey tucks Feisty Countess back in away from all those leaders, and she manages to save some ground. Spain has one beat. That is the sluggish starting Classy Cara, and they open the quarter in 23-1. and one. Miss Pixie showing the way. Eden Lodge second. Middle of the track, Broadway Express, the long shot. Third gold for my gal has the rail. Fourth, about three and a half off the lead. Miss Seffens is a half length off of her in fifth. It's two lengths back to Feisty Countess, another three to Spain, and the trailer Classy Cara. They continue down the back stretch. Miss Pixie showing the way. Eden Lodge is second to her outside. Broadway Express, the half in 46 and 4. Gold for my gal is still right there at the rail in fourth. Miss Seffens is two lengths back in fifth. She's got six lengths to make up. And now Spain begins to gain along the inside of Feisty Countess. On to the final turn. Miss Pixie with a lead. Eden Lodge is second. Gold for my gal moves up at the rail in third. Broadway Express nest. Miss Seffens in a striking position. Spain needs some room along the inside. Three quarters of a mile. Raced in 112. And here they come into the stretch of the fantasy. And way out on the outside comes Classy Cara with a very fast move. And Classy Cara has circled the field and gone to the lead. Eden Lodge along the inside. Gold for my gal. Miss Seffens is fourth. It is Classy Cara who made the quick move and has taken command a length and a half. To the inside is Eden Lodge. Also right there, gold for my gal. Classy Cara has the lead. Eden Lodge going to try her one more time. Classy Cara is going to win the fantasy by a length and a quarter. Tight for second between Eden Lodge and gold for my gal as Miss Sepp. Fading in the drive. Just a very impressive performance here by Classy Cara. Uh, looked very sharp making that wide move. Not an easy, uh, an easy racetrack for her to make that move on. Classy Cara is a three-year-old chestnut daughter of General Meeting. She was foaled in Washington State. She's out of the...
Side by side, contesting the second position. Little expectations. Close up fourth toward the rail, just two lengths off the lead. Early goer is next between horses in sync, is caught toward the outside, just over three lengths off the leader. And then Charlie's Bow, who's trying to thread the needle through traffic down toward the rail, three and a half to four lengths off the lead, joined by Cosine. And finally, American.com, 22 seconds, the time for the opening quarter. And Collar 1 leads it by two lengths with a quarter mile to come. And still, Suncat is second. Little expectations, a closer third down toward the inside, but still two lengths off the leader with Fortifier dropping back off the pace. Charlie's bow is still a good five lengths away, the half and 45 seconds. And Collar 1 has opened up on both Suncat and Little Expectations by a widening three-length margin. Collar 1, 16th to come, still leads it by three, four lengths now to Suncat. And at the line, Collar 1 takes the grade three Lafayette. After that, it was Suncat. Cat, who was forced to chase the pace almost every step of the way. Little expectations rallying into the third spot here, making a bit of an outside move late in the stretch, but uh, not able to be of any match for the top two. The winner, caller one, is a three-year-old Bay Colt. He was a son of phone trick from the Danzig Mare Baltic Sea, bred in Kentucky by Orpendale and John R. Gaines Thoroughbreds. He is owned by Teresa MacArthur and Carolyn Chapman trained by James K. Chapman, ridden to victory by Robbie Davis. Lafayette Stakes winner Caller 1 completes the seven furlongs at Keeneland in a very impressive 121 and 3 fifth seconds. Continuing with racing down at Keeneland, we have the Jenny Wiley Stakes. This was run on uh, Thursday down at Keeneland. We've got a stake a day program down there, a lot of activity. It's like the Saratoga meet up here. This is for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course. The purse, $100,000. Let's head back down to Keeneland for the call of Thursday's Jenny Wiley Stakes. And they're off in the Jenny Wiley. Moments of magic ducked in a bit at the start, but now quickly straightens course. Pratella is away running for the lead toward the inside, and Cozy Blues is also up close on the far outside in third as Rhonda comes away fourth just outside of Rose of Zollern, then Chasing Stars, Sapphire Ring, and Astra is the trailer, some five lengths off the lead, heading into the first turn. Pratella moves forward, leads it by a length and a half. Moments of Magic goes second by a half length. Rose of Zollern and Rhonda are side by side, just inside of Cozy Blues, who takes the wide route off the turn and onto the back stretch. Cozy Blues out in the center of the course, now moves up into third, just a length and a half off the leader. The opening quarter in 24 and one. But Pratella continues to lead it three parts of a length to Moments of Magic. Rhonda now regains the third spot by a neck. Cozy Blues is fourth on the far outside. Rose of Zollern hugs the rail in fifth, just two lengths off the lead, followed by Chasing Stars outside of Sapphire Ring and Astra Trails, but just over four lengths off the leader. 48 and three, the time for the half. And Pratella leads them midway on the far turn by three parts of a length as Moments of Magic continues to stalk the leader from second. And now Rose of Zoller looks for an opening toward the inside in third. Moving off the turn, Moments of Magic needs to find more. Pratella leading Ronda. Rose of Zoller and Astra is looking for some running room. And Sapphire Ring is coming from far back. Astra bursting through, chasing Ronda. Pratella still there. Astra striding forward, final 16th of the Jenny Wiley, and Astra comes from last to first to win it.
Franklin Paulson, a daughter of theatrical from Savannah Slough by Seattle Slough. She's owned by Mr. Paulson, trained by Simon Bray, ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Astra completes the mile in the 16th on the turf course at Keeneland in 1 minute 42 and 2 fifth seconds. Continuing stakes action down at Keeneland on the 14th on Friday, we had stakes action with the Makers Mark Mile. This is a three-year-old and up event on the turf. The purse here, $150,000, of course, going a flat mile on the grass. Let's head back to Keeneland for the call of the Makers Mark Mile. And they're off. Harahi is away well to the inside, and so is Special Coach. A special coach now moves by to take the early lead. Conserve is going to move up from the center of the course. Marquette is right there in third. Harahi now is taken back toward the inside as Aboriginal Apex starts advancing from the far outside around the first turn. Up at the front end of the field, Conserve is now challenging for the lead as special coach is still there toward the inside. Aboriginal Apex will stalk them from third, a length and a half off the lead, heading on to the back stretch. Then Marquette inside of North Coat Road, followed by Delay of Game, who is sixth, some four lengths off the lead. Harahi, then Rod and Staff, and the Gray in Katha trails after an opening quarter of 23 and four-fifths seconds. Conserve leads it now by almost a full length, and Special Coach is still there but second. Aboriginal Apex is next on the outside, joined by North Coat Road. Those two up within two lengths of the lead. Marquette is threading the needle through traffic down toward the inside. Delay of game is still in the fifth position. Four lengths off the lead of Conserve, who got a half in 47 and 1. Quarter mile to come. Conserve leads them by two off the far turn. Marquette is second. Then Aboriginal Apex. Delay of game is down toward the inside. Still four lengths away, trying to find an opening. But already, they're in the final furlong of the Maker's Mark mile with Conserve chased by Marquette. Delay of game and Katha running late toward the rail. Through it all, Conserve challenged by Marquette and in Katha, but Conserve has won the in one minute, 35 seconds flat. The highlight of the racing season at Keeneland, and of course the racing week certainly at Keeneland, the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. This is a grade one event, the purse $750,000. They're going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Of course, three-year-olds often making their final prep for the Kentucky Derby. Let's head down to Keeneland once more for the call of the Toyota Bluegrass. And they're off in the Toyota Bluegrass. More than ready, and Hal's Hope come out battling for the early lead. And High Yield is right there toward the inside. And Mighty, after coming out of the gate in awkward fashion, now straightens course and drops back about five lengths from the early battle up front. And High Yield sneaks through an opening toward the inside and puts Hal's Hope to an early test midway on the first turn. The top two separated by a half length. More than ready. Takes back from that battle in third. He's got bare outline right there to the inside. Gap of five back to wheel away. Mighty is next, running some 10 lengths off the leader. A margin of six more then to the late running Deputy Warlock and Settlement is last. The opening quarter went in 23 and one. High yield leads it by a neck and Hal's Hope is right there to the outside, still with the leader then a gap of a length and a half to Bear Outline who inches forward toward the inside of more than ready eight more lengths to wheel away. Mighty, still some 11 lengths off the leader and yet to start a run. Deputy Warlock is still far back on the far turn and then settlement the half in 46 seconds and High Yield has the advantage by three parts of a length. 
Hal's Hope is still second coming to the quarter pole. Then more than ready on the outside. Bear Outline has been toward the rail, still fourth, still three lengths away from High Yield, who's trying to get free of more than ready moving off the turn. Mighty and Wheel Away, both six lengths off the pace, heading into the stretch as more than ready is engaging High Yield. Bear Outline is there in third. Wheel Away coming. Deputy Warlock is still far back. And in the final furlong of the Toyota Bluegrass, High Yield is dead game on the inside. More than ready is right there with him. These two to the line. High Yield takes the Toyota Bluegrass in a time of one. Over seven furlongs in 122 and one fifth seconds. Next, we have for you the Wood Memorial. This, of course, the highlight race of the Aqueduct Racing Meeting. $750,000 for three-year-olds going once around the Aqueduct Oval, a mile and an eighth on the main track. Let's head back down to Aqueduct now for the call of the Wood Memorial. And they're off. Country only is hustled away from the gate. Exchange rate is asked for early run. Cats at home is there, and Red Bullet is right up in between horses as the field moves into the clubhouse turn. And there's lots of crowding at the back of the pack there. Traditionally, it was uh, crowded, as too was aptitude. Around the clubhouse turn. Country only to be the pacemaker. Red Bullet runs second in the early going. Then on the inside, Cats at Home moves up to be third. Exchange rate is fourth. And Fusaichi Pegasus is in and among horses. He's fifth, about three lengths from the lead. Then on the outside, it's Fight for Alley racing in sixth position, a break of five, two appearing now, followed by an unhurried postponed. Aptitude now beginning to make steady progress. He's about ten lengths from the pacemakers, followed by Traditionally Connect, and Painted Pistol is the last of them all through a half mile in 46 and 4 fifths seconds. The pace is a strong one here as they approach the half mile pole. It's still country only with the lead and Red Bullet is right at his throat latch and Fusaichi Pegasus is in perfect striking position third on the outside, and Kent DeSormo now is asking him for a bit more run with three furlongs to go. Cats at home is running in fourth, a break of three lengths, toward the inside appearing now, followed by exchange rate. Aptitude still ten behind as the field turns for home. Red Bullet on the outside toward the inside, Country Only, and he's tough today. Country Only short lead, and Fusa Ichi Pegasus is asked for his best in mid-stretch. Into the final furlong, and Fusa Ichi Pegasus runs by the front runners, and he's pulling away, and he is pulling away impressively. Red Bullet left behind, Country Only third, Aptitude fourth. Fusa Ichi Pegasus will roll into Kentucky as the favorite in the Derby. He Number five, Fusa Ichi Pegasus was first. Number two, Red Bullet was second. It's a photo for third. Number four, Aptitude, finished third. Number nine, Country Only, was fourth. run. This is a, another uh, big one-run closer in the mold of Anise and Wheel Away. We've seen a couple of them uh, developing this spring into some very nice three-year-olds, a nicely bred AP Indy colt who I'm sure will be heard from later on in the season. Fusaichi Pegasus, however, very impressive, a physically impressive horse, very big, very commanding presence, uh, does seem to have some temper problems. He was uh, giving his handlers a little trouble before the race as well as after the race. But uh, certainly 
not giving uh, not giving his backers much of a uh, much problem at all here with a handy four and a quarter length victory. Fusaichi Pegasus is a three-year-old bay colt. He was bred in Kentucky by Arthur B. Hancock III and Stonerside Limited. He's a son of Mr. Prospector and the Danzig Mare Angel Fever. She, a half-sister to Demons Be Gone and Pine Bluff, two horses from the uh, Loblolly breeding program who have, were both quite